Friday, February 1. This is the news on PBCJ. I am Simone Absalom. One of the outcomes of the recent 37th annual Caribbean Travel Marketplace Conference in Montego Bay was the launch of the Global Tourism Resilience and Crisis Management Center. Tourism Minister Edmund Bartlett gave details about the visions for the center. An observatory is also going to be attached to it. The nature of this is to provide uh, a repository of knowledge and information and expertise to assist global communities in responding to and in tracking and managing and recovering from and build better and thrive. Um, as a result of global disruptions. Minister Bartlett said the center would help the tourism industry to mitigate against external shocks such as natural disasters. And then hurricanes come and they come in the region with a lot of ferocity. These days we hardly can measure um, the, 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 the level. Uh, in the old days we talk about category five and so on. Mary and Irma defied all of that. Nobody can quite say what category they were. Uh, I remember one of the stories out of um, uh, Puerto Rico was that, my God, it felt like earthquake. Or, or buildings were shaking uh, like it was an earthquake. Now, that kind of intensity of, uh, of wind um, is not measured readily um, in our category. So what we're seeing is more and more of these disruptions. He also spoke to man-made disasters such as economic slides. And there's even a fear now that we could be going into one in 2019, although this morning I read very interestingly another account which suggests that what we may have is a slowing down of economic activity rather than a full-scale recession. But these are real concerns, and when that happens, it does not only cause disruptions, but it causes dislocation. The minister was speaking recently at a JIS think tank. In Kingston. Prime Minister Andrew Holness says the region must take action now in order to address the devastating impacts of global warming and climate change. Holness noted that the impact of climate change in the region has already taken a toll on the economies of a number of countries and could have even more lasting effect if a proactive approach is not taken. He says the destruction caused by Hurricanes Maria and Irma throughout the Caribbean in 2017 should serve as a reminder to everyone about the dangers of the phenomenon. The Prime Minister cited agricultural decline, decreasing water resources, intense hurricanes and the result destruction of properties and infrastructure and the erosion of coastlines, mangroves, corals and beaches among the devastating effects. Holness was speaking at the official launch of the Global Tourism Resilience and Crisis Management Center at the Montego Bay Convention Center in St. James on January 30. Minister of Education, Youth and Information, Senator Ruel Reed, says that more than 150 specialist mathematics teachers will be deployed to the secondary education system following the completion of training and graduation in June. They are the first cohort to benefit under the government's drive to increase the number of secondary level mathematics teachers trained locally. More than 400 mathematics education scholarships were awarded to potential teachers between 2015 and 2018 at a cost of more than $600 million. He noted that the bonding period has been increased from three years to five years to ensure that those who benefit from scholarships can give back to the country and assist in transforming the education sector. I was able to say to my colleagues that we can't invest because we need these colleagues to give us some commitment to help to transform our country and our workforce. So I had to extend the bond period from three years to five years. I had to say to those people in the metropolitan, no, you can't just come and have us train our people and you just take them away. At least if you give me five years, that is reasonable and we will ensure in terms of policy that these areas that the country uh, 
uh, fees that is of great interest and need for us, we will, we will dedicate resources and full scholarship to these areas um, in return for guaranteed minimum of five years service back to the system. The minister was speaking on campus at the launch of the Michael International Mathematics Summit on Wednesday. If you have diabetes, you are at risk of developing heart disease. That's the word from Professor of Endocrinology and Metabolism at the University of the West Indies, Michael Boyne. Professor Boyne says two-thirds of persons with diabetes die from heart disease. He explained that while there are more effective treatments for diabetes these days, the relative health issues often lead to issues of the heart. When we look at it medically, they are um, the process of how the person gets that blockage that may result in either a heart attack or an arrhythmia or heart failure is very, very similar. But the diabetic person does it at a much faster rate. There are some estimates that if you look at the arteries, if you were to dissect all the arteries in a person with diabetes and compare it to another person of the same age, that artery is going to look much older. A minimum of seven years accelerated aging is seen in a diabetic artery. According to Dr. Boyne, an International Diabetes Federation study looking at persons who are diabetic and their education on heart disease noted worrying responses from participants. Two in three had risk factors for developing a heart attack. Right? Two out of every three. One in four had never discussed or couldn't remember having a discussion with their healthcare provider about these factors. But most of them thought that they weren't at risk. Even though two-thirds of them are going to die from heart disease, most of them thought that everything is fine. So there's this disconnect between I'm okay, but the reality is that you are high risk. Professor Boyne was speaking at the launch of Heart Foundation of Jamaica's launch of Heart Month activities, which begins today. The month's activities include screenings at various clinics across the island and at their location on Beachwood Avenue, as well as a 5K run event at Emancipation Park on February 3. The Universal Service Fund, USF, in partnership with the National Blood Transfusion Service, is inviting the support of the public at their blood drive on February 7 at the PCJ Auditorium. That's on 36 Trafalgar Road in Kingston from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Marketing and Public Relations Manager at the USF, Deline Powell, said the fund, as part of its corporate social responsibility, is always looking for new and interesting ways to have a positive impact on the various persons it serves. She said this will be a blood drive with a difference, as there will be a very strong public education component adding that the USF not only wants persons to donate blood once, but to also become a regular voluntary blood donor. In regional news, we look to Guyana, where Roxanne George Wiltshire, Guyana's acting chief justice, on Thursday ruled the motion of no confidence passed in the National Assembly on December 21 as valid. The President and the Ministers cannot therefore remain in government beyond the three months within which elections are required to be held in accordance with Article 106 of Article 7, unless that time is enlarged by the National Assembly in accordance with the requirements of said Article 106 of Article 7. Owing to my time above, the other questions raised by the applicants are rendered moot and do not need to be addressed in the application except to say that this Court cannot set aside, set aside or nullify a ruling that was validly made in accordance with provisions of Article 106 of Article 6 of the Constitution, nor can it state the enforcement of a resolution validly declared in, accord in accordance with the same provision of the Constitution. Such is prohibited, as is held in a number of cases, for example, the Attorney General and Dr. Ranger. While a court can intervene to inquire what has occurred in the National Assembly, this can only be done if the National Assembly acts unconstitutionally. This is not the case here. So therefore, the ruling of the Speaker that the no-confidence motion debated in the National Assembly on December 21st, 2018 was carried by a vote of a majority of all the elected members of the National Assembly is thus lawful and valid 
being in accordance with the requirements of Article 106 of Article 6 of the Constitution. This paves the way for a fresh regional and general elections in Guyana by March this year. The government sought to challenge the validity of the votes cast for the motion of no confidence in the National Assembly. The David Granger coalition collapsed last month after then-government backbencher Sharandas Prasad backed a motion of no confidence filed by Bharat Jagdeo, the general secretary of the main opposition People's Progressive Party. But in a swift response, Attorney General Basil Williams says the government is prepared to challenge the ruling. He said that they needed to have 34 votes and not 33. And why is that? It's because you require an absolute majority, what we call it an absolute majority, as against a simple majority. The simple majority is 33. Now, if the absolute majority has the former president of the CCJ, so, um, Dennis Byron, said, we have an absolute majority when he looked at our constitution and a simple majority. And he said the absolute um, majority is stronger than the simple majority. It means that Torishi cannot be the same vote for the absolute majority. And in any event, we are talking about a parliament with six to five. It's an odd number parliament. And the case is show when you have an odd number parliament to get the majority, you divide it by half plus one. And when you divide six to five by half, you get a fraction. And since there are no half human beings, you have to round up the fraction to the next whole number. So that's 33 is half. And you plus one to get a majority. In sports, we ball off with cricket as the West Indies' surprising dominance of England continued on the opening day of the second test with the home side's fast bowlers bundling out the visitors for 187 at the Sir Vivian Richards Stadium in Antigua yesterday. Already 1-0 up in three match series, the Caribbean team's openers negotiated 21 testing overs with to close and the pair of Craig Bathwaite and John Campbell will resume on the second morning at 30 without loss in reply. Thrashed by the comprehensive margin of 381 runs in the first test in Barbados less than a week earlier and then again struggled to cope with the combined assault of the home side's paces. Well, this session saw England still at the crease and Moyne Alley going fine until then. Shannon Gabriel taking a comfortable catch. Ball seeming to just stick into the top surface. Another wicket for Kimo Roach. He's been impressive. A few good blows and that was a blow. Ben Fox was hit on the hand, on the thigh, back into the stumps and he's not on the field keeping wicket. and went caught in that slip cordon roach again jimmy anderson making a bit of room cleaned up by shannon gabriel 187 all out england stuart ball back into england's team that was a huge appeal to norvell he did review he overstepped on the front line, Sam Curran, and he was missing. England don't lose a review. And in athletics, Kobe Sigowin, the agent of several Jamaican athletes affiliated with Adidas brand, believes that a number of his athletes could miss the Jamaica Athletics Administrative Association's national senior championships this year, as its schedule is too close to the brand's mandatory meet. After months of back and forth, the JAAA concluded yesterday that the date for the national championships would be from June 20 to June 23, 2019, four days before the mandatory Adidas Boost Games for the brand's athletes in Boston, Massachusetts. In a release, the JAAA stated that, quote, after further consideration, the dates for the national senior and junior championships are fixed for June 20 to 23, end quote.
But Sigobin believes the date is not convenient for his clients as they have been thrust into a situation to choose between obligations to their sponsors and a chance to represent their country at the premier athletics event of the year, the IAAF World Championships. And that's the news. I'm Simone Absalom. Pleasant viewing.